Starting from this video, we will uh, talk about Chapter 13, National Income Accounting and the Balance of Payments. These two are um, very essential tools for us to understand international finance. Okay. All right. Now, um, first of all, we can say that um, you know in previous chapters. All we discussed are about international trade. Okay, so starting from this chapter, we actually step into um, this the scope of international finance. Okay, and um, sometimes it's also called the open economy macroeconomics. So these two are actually uh, interchangeable. Okay. Um, you know, from the international trade to international finance, there are uh, several major uh, differences. Okay? Or we could say we're making um, several uh, major shifts okay? um, in terms of the topics and theories. Right? So the first thing is, the first uh, major difference is uh, previously we uh, focused upon the transaction I'm sorry the the um, real goods and services okay we always look at the real economy and um, when we for example did the welfare analysis um, in the specific factor model or a hectoroling model we always look at the real wage real rental price right um, but here once we uh, step into the international finance, then we uh, focused more upon the monetary economy. Okay, we will look at the price, the nominal price, and um, so this is uh, the first one. Okay, uh, the second one is um, when we look at uh, international trade. Um, you know, all of these uh, trade models are actually built upon microeconomic theories more specifically uh, firm theories okay we talk about you know um, a variety of models which are built upon the uh, microeconomic decision making uh, process okay uh, however when we start talking about international finance we're gonna pay more attention to um, national output um, or the uh, like the interest rate, okay, uh, inflation, uh, even unemployment. These um, kind of the macroeconomic um, theories. Okay. Um, however, we're always going to look at these macroeconomic theories in the open economy setting or assumption. Uh, so this is a major difference be between this uh, part of the discussion and um, what we know in intermediate macroeconomics. Okay? Uh, in intermediate macro, most of the time we look at the uh, economy uh, without uh, considering exports and imports. In other words, we had the assumption that the economy is closed. Okay? Now, because um, our focus is um, upon these uh, uh, macroeconomic uh, theories or indicators, so that's why uh, here uh, international finance is also called the open market macroeconomics. Okay, but um, don't get me wrong; I'm not saying that it's 100% uh, open economy macro. Okay, we actually will talk about some of micro things. For example, investment. Okay, like when we talk about the currency market, when we talk about the um, the currency swamp, for example, some of the financial investment okay, on the currency market that's still pretty much uh, micro uh, stuff. Okay, so it's it, it is a combination of micro and macro with. Um, uh, a larger portion of the discussion devoted towards macro. Okay. 
All right. Now, uh, first of all, let's take a look at the national income uh, accounting for an open economy. Okay. National income account in a closed economy, which we learned in intermediate macro, would be Y, uh, which stands for national output, equals consumption C plus investment I plus government spending G. And obviously, this is uh, the expenditure approach okay, we we use to uh, figure out the national output or GDP. Okay. Um, now we're gonna, you know, uh, amend this equation a little bit by adding exports and imports into the equation, specifically the right hand right hand side of the equation. Okay. Now remember. Uh, the left hand side is still national output. That means how much we produced okay, here in the United States, for example. And uh, export, we should add to the right hand side of the equation because that's also what we produced in the US. But it's not part of our expenditure because it's a uh, foreign. Uh, companies or households purchased okay so that's plus uh, imports we should minus imports simply because uh, the imports is uh, how much American uh, uh, households or, or businesses spend uh, on the goods and services made uh, overseas okay so it's part of our expenditure but it's actually not what we produced in the US. So we should take this part, the imported goods and services, off when we figure out national output, right? So that's why there's a minus sign in front of it. And here we can introduce the concept current account CA, okay? Which is the difference between exports and imports, okay? Uh, current account is where we uh, record the uh, transactions of goods and services across the national border. All right. Now, mathematically here, as we said, it's uh, exports minus imports. Uh, from the previous equation, we know once we move consumption, investment, and government purchases to the left-hand side, then the right-hand side would just be current account, right? So this equals y minus c minus i minus g, right? Now, if the international borrowing is not allowed, then the current account should be zero. What does this mean? This means if you cannot borrow from other countries, then your exports must be equal to your imports. Okay, your exports must be equal to your imports. Now, how could we understand these? You can see exports as, you know, uh, the money you make, okay, or you earn, and imports would be the money you spent, okay? So the money you earn must be equal to the money you earn, uh, I'm sorry, you spent um, if you cannot borrow, okay? So just like us, you know, if, we, if I cannot borrow, uh, from banks or with a you know, credit card or some kind of online, you know, um, um, kind of lending uh, website or other financial instruments, um, then, you know, how much I spend uh, would be equal to how much I uh, earn. Okay, suppose there's no saving involved. Um, all right. Um, now let's talk about the current account surplus and deficit. Now here, the international borrowing must be allowed. Okay, so if this is allowed, then we know the CA surplus, which would be uh, exports minus imports, uh, the difference would be greater than zero. In other words, the money we earn is greater than the money we spent. Vice versa, the CA deficit means the money we earned is less than the money we spent. So this is the case for the US, right? Now, um, let's take a look at the uh, the CA surplus and, and um, 
a deficit across countries. So here is a very interesting over time evolution of what so called the global imbalances index. Okay? And um, as you can see that, you know, these, for example, Anglophone countries, so these are US, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the UK. Uh, these five English speaking countries, okay? sometimes we call them five eyes. And as you can see, you know, they account for a huge amount of the um, current account deficit. Okay. And um, some developing countries like China, okay, and like uh, the Middle East, uh, like uh, South Asia and Pacific, they account for a large amount of the um, current account surplus. Okay. Now, there are actually uh, several other interesting things you may um, uh, observe okay, on this figure. I want to leave this for you guys as an assignment, okay, so you can make your own observations. And please try to find the possible uh, causes. Okay? Uh, think about these uh, trends or the changes in the trend and trying to figure out the why and bring your thoughts to the class, we're going to have an interesting discussion. Okay. Now here, let's um, narrowly focus upon the United States and look at the overtime evolution of the current account deficit and the foreign debt. In other words, how much money we owe um, to the rest of the world. Okay. As you can see that, you know, um, in mid or late 1970s, our current account um, it's almost zero, in other words, um, almost balanced, okay? But uh, since the late 1980s, and especially, you know, uh, in early 2000s, we find that the current account um, deficit gets much larger, okay? Remember, this dashed line is a zero line, so when we stay below it, that means it's a deficit, okay? Now, because over time, um, we're running a larger and larger current account deficit so we have to borrow from the rest of the world to be able to finance our um, imports right and or the excess imports and so you would find that you know uh, we owe more and more money to the rest of the world so there are some ups and downs but overall you find that it gets you know um, you know, uh, dramatically declined on this figure. That means we borrowed more and more, okay, especially in recent years. Now here, you may find that this uh, this figure I got from the textbook, you know, the um, only got the data till 2015. So here, I would ask you guys to go to FRED, uh, FRED Federal Reserve Economic Database to update the data. And you don't have to, you know, turn this in, but I just want you guys to do it. It's going to be very quick, like, you know, two minutes work. And um, trying to figure out if there's any recent change in trend for both curves. Okay. And then bring your thoughts to the, to the class we will discuss. Okay. The thoughts would be, you know, any change in the uh, recent years, uh, like from 2015 to uh, 2021, I believe. Okay. And um, is there any possible reasons you can come up with to explain uh, these recent changes? Okay, so uh, that's it for this uh, video.